Do you know that feeling of when you get to your desk and someone was there cleaning, tidying everything differently that you are used to, so you can find any more of the things that you want? We often do the same thing when we are refactoring tests. And the dry principle is one of those where when you are not careful, usually it may lead you to a bad place. One of the problems with the dry principle, don't repeat yourself, is that we tend to go too far with it, okay? We think that duplication is the root of all evil, but in fact, sometimes it's not. So we look into things, and because they look similar, we assume that they are the same thing, but sometimes they are not. And especially in tests, because when you look into the dry principle, you should think that if two things may change at different places because of different reasons, for sure, they are not the same thing, okay? It's not because they are similar, it's not because they are they look like the same, that they are in fact the same thing. This happens a lot in tests, why? Because it's common to have, for example, two tests that they look like quite similar because they use the same arrange, they have similar things on the assertions, but in fact, they are asserting different behaviors. So one behavior may change and the other not. So when you are trying to apply the dry principle to those tests, often they may lead you to a bad place. Okay, let's take a look on that. I have here a simple XUnit project with just a few tests that will be basically refactoring using the dry principle. If we look into this, let me just explain you what this thing does, is that we are testing this Elcom message function. Okay, so on this Elcom message, you will provide the user and in return, you will receive a message. And on that message, you'll be able to check which language is applied to that message, but also what's the text on that message. Three things that we are asserting here. So one of them is if I have a user that has no defined language, it should generate a message basically in English. The other one is that if I'm using a user with the English language, it should return a hello as well. And the other one is that if my user has the Portuguese language, it should return hola, that is hello in Portuguese. What you'll be doing is looking into this thing and trying to refactor it, applying the dry principle. One of the first things that come to mind when I look to all this code is, for example, these magic strings regarding language, okay? We see them popping up a lot. Okay, so let's just refactor this thing. Okay, on this case, I know that English is my default language. So one pretty sensible thing to do here is going to this thing. And now I will just use Rider to help me refactor this thing. I will introduce a field, replace all the EN, just apply the refactoring and boom. Now all those EN things went away. But let's look into just those two tests, okay? This one looks fine, okay? I'm creating a user. The welcome message, when I try to get it, I'm checking that, okay, it's returning on, on my default language, okay? And that default language will give me an LOG. Now I go here and here says, okay, the given user with an Eng English language should return hello gi as well, and basically it's in English. But now I'm setting up my user and providing a default language. So now even if I remove that those magic strings, in fact, I have a problem here. Because if you look into this thing, now I have two different reasons to change. Let's imagine that one day you need to change your default language from English to a different language. On that moment, a simple change to this variable will cause impacts on this test as well. And we don't want that. So when we apply the dry principle to things, we always need to think if by doing that change, somehow I will be damaging the design in the future. Because now I have two things that may change at different places, but I'm using the same variable. So what we can do instead on this case, on this case, it would be quite simple fix because instead of using this default language EN, what you could use is something as simple as this. You just define here that the English language is EN, and now you take advantage of one of the latest features of .NET, and basically you assign to that constant 
another constant, okay, the default language. So now here you can use English and English. And as you can see, if one day you decide to change your default language to a different thing than English, now it's pretty fine. So we took this test to a better place. Another common thing that you could do here to simplify the code and applying the dry principle is that if you look to, to the setup, it's usually kind of the same thing. Okay, We are just creating a new user, assigning the name and the language. Possibly on a real world scenario, we will find that this user setup will have a lot of properties. So you can see the benefit of extracting this thing to a different place. So what I see a lot of times happening on this case is that you want to apply the dry principle. So now you go to one of these instantiations and you pick that, you extract the method and next. Now you have a create user method. Now what you can do is as simple as you apply this thing everywhere. Okay, but for example, on this case, what I will be doing is that my user needs to have Portuguese. So let's just apply that here, create the user as well. Once you do that, in fact, you have simplified your code, okay? You have extracted exactly the same thing, they look similar and you extract a different method. The problem is, for example, if you look into this thing and you see here, create user, if I don't step in into this create user method, it's difficult to me to understand why this is English, why this is hello, why this is key. I don't have those values here to make it clear to me why this is happening, okay? So what can we do instead? One thing that you can do to simplify this code, bringing the logic of user initialization to a different place, applying the dry principle, is that instead of using a simple method like this, you can create a, a builder, okay? You can apply the builder pattern. So let's get this user builder thing. And as you can see, what we are doing here is basically creating a user the default data is this one. I have a name. I don't have a language, for example. And I have a few methods here where I can set my name, set my language, and build that thing. So now let's see how we can apply that. And this time, instead of doing this create user, now I can do a new user builder. And on that builder, I can say something like with name gi with language pt. So now it's pretty clear the relationship between this user and the message that we are asserting, okay? This is extremely different from the one that you can see here because on this case, you can't know where this English come from, where the key come from, why hello, okay? It should be related to the English, but why? On this case, it's pretty clear to me that, okay, I have provided this key, so, okay, a key. So as you can see, when we apply the dry principle, it's not as simple of making sure that you move things out if they look similar. We should do that, but leaving the degree of control where if you change something here, you don't need to change all the other ones and they can change at different pace. What I'm trying to tell you is that even if the dry principle is a good thing to, to do, usually when you are talking about tests, you should always think twice because Different tests tend to evolve in at different paces, and you should always favor readability on your tests. Readability is one of the key properties of a good test. If you want to see me exploring different properties of good testing, just leave a comment down below. And if you are interested on testing topics, just take a look onto this talk. I will see you soon, and in the meanwhile, just keep things simple.